Oh yes, now I usually save that for my live stream, but give me a minute, that is some nice water. We'll get into the video today, and today we're going to be talking about the ITP uh, M1. I can't pronounce whatever this is. The Polycarpov ITP, which basically translates into the Russian for heavy cannon fighter, essentially, according to Wikipedia, is a Soviet fighter, you know, designed during Second World Wars and was prolonged by the evacuation of the German advance in Moscow uh, in 1941. Now, first flight was 23rd of February 1942. Status cancelled, they built two of these. There's an ITP M1 and then M2. So, there are two prototypes. Now, this thing has a 37 uh, millimeter cannon and two 20 millimeter cannons. So this thing is incredibly lethal. I can't wait to test this thing out. It's got a rank three, it's a battle rating 3.3. And currently, because the only way I've got access to this vehicle is via the test drive you get in the battle pass. Now, let's take a look at the battle pass real quick. So let's go back to stage one. As you can see, you get the first 15 levels for free. And a part of that, you get a test drive for the vehicle to know whether you want it or not, it's level nine. You get it for 12 hours, you get four backups for the vehicle as well, and that's fantastic. Obviously, I'll cover the T-55, but where does the ITP sit? Past the boat and in the free section of content. Now, crew of one, max speed is 676 kilometers an hour, and, well, you know, it's pretty all right. Let's take a look at it here. Max repair cost is 12,000. That's quite high for something of this low battle rating. Again, it sits in the tech tree right down here. Where is it? Rank 3. Uh, just below the B25 if you own the B25. That's cool. 20 mm and 37s. This thing should be immense fun. Oh, let's, uh, let's cut to some gameplay here in a second. One armor plate directly behind the pilot. 13 millimeters. And let's take a look at the X-ray. Double wing spar with fuel and liquid cooling systems. Fuel behind the pilot. Uh, controls and tail controls and traction control surfaces as they're called in game. Offensive 37 millimeter running directly in the middle of the airframe followed by two 20 millimeter cannons either side the engine inverted V uh, 12 cylinder radial Although to be honest that doesn't look radial to me that must be a, a either a typo or some sort of mix-up here because That's a V not a not a radial engine per se modifications wise We've got the standard stock standard belt uh, same as any other Russian thing and it comes with Fab 100s, Fab 50s, it's also some rockets as well, so that thing's a bunch of fun. Taking a look at the cockpit, it's actually quite funky in here. Probably the most high definition cockpit we've got of uh, a Russian fighter, at least at this date. Looks pretty, pretty decent actually, with the central cluster of dials in the middle there. Gun sight, followed by your voltage for the aircraft. Alright, it was an A20G app. Wonder if there's going to be another aircraft. Good thing I put 30 minutes fuel. She's chugging through the fuel just a little bit. B18B, a couple of 109s above me. I love getting mixed matchmaker. This is probably the thing I hate the most. You can't really test the full extent of a vehicle now just because, you know, nothing is not necessarily historical, but the enemies are just a mixed bunch of bloody yobbos. Like, I don't understand. I understand it gets you in matches quicker. You want to come after me, Spitfire? Come on, Spitfire. I know you want to come down here. Let's tango, Spitfire. Hurricane's looking to defend. A20 is coming in. It's going to be a funky one. Come on. Come on. The critical hit. I'll take the critical hit. However, I am damaged. A20G is trying to do a fighter maneuver. Alright, hurricane time. Let's take out the fighters first. There's a P40 over there. You really want to go head on? All right, critical hit. Pull up, pull up, pull up. Okay. Right, that's not necessarily a good thing to do. Turning with a hurricane is not the best option. What are you doing, Ash? What are you doing? Okay, he's down. <laughs> Pick up mind. Can't see anything. Right, there's another Spitfire up there who is absolutely smoking. I might head back to base. There is a zero just there. What the hell? Is some sort of ghost zero? What the bloody blazes is that? Probably a dead wreck. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Let's chase this F6F. Come on, come on, get a hit. There we go. Goodbye, wings. See you later. 
One of the things I find interesting about the aircraft is it's really, really heavy. It's one of those... The ailerons don't necessarily roll too well, and the elevator authority is quite lackluster. The rudder doesn't really kick it enough in order to move the aircraft around. So you will struggle at lower to higher speeds depending on the fight. As you can see here, it's, it's, it's a very sluggish aircraft, and while it does well above 400 kilometers an hour, it is not necessarily that mobile unless you've got say one or two passes once you get those two passes out the way as you can see here look at this come on lift 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 incredibly heavy and we're gonna yoink this p51 yoink thanks teammate i appreciate it and i don't know like once you lose those couple of turns it's kind of a bit backwards anyway fuck all the time spray and pray i hit the w and s key a couple of times don't go head on with this thing 50 cals are more lethal to your engine, but in terms of armament presets, 220s and a 37 is not something to be stifled with, I can tell you that much. I'm gonna get lucky on this 109. Come on, miss, 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 miss. Anyway. Alright, we'll take you into a full on actual match. I've climbed up off the left, and uh, now we've got an XP50. Now, why is he going head on with me? I don't know, but this is quite interesting. I hit his aircraft. He's on fire. He's still alive. I'm still alive. I didn't know you could ram people like that. Unfortunately, he doesn't stay alive for much longer, but there's a Corsair down on the deck. We really want to take him out. As you can see here, we're pushing past almost the limits of the, uh, of the aircraft and airframe itself. 700. Got a critical hit on the Corsair there. He's going to be going down. Doing 685. It's probably where the sweet spot for the aircraft is. Anywhere between 400 and 600 is probably where you'd likely to see the aircraft. That being said though, I did climb up to about 3,000 meters. And the engine does start to overheat quite a bit. And that's really one thing I don't like about the ITP. But being such a heavy aircraft though, you can usually just spread uh, your guns. Now, had I been using air targets, it would have been absolutely nailed. But I still had default ammunition loaded. There you go. Goodbye Corsair. Next target, Spitfire. Just double check around me, cautiously, uh, objectively. And the interesting thing about the aircraft is it's just incredibly lackluster. Sure, the engine is a two-speed supercharger with an aftercooler. It's It's got direct injection for the fuel, and it's also liquid-cooled. But the engine overheats like a mother... And it's just really lackluster. I don't know how to describe it. For a 12-cylinder engine, it kind of doesn't really do much. Aside from just overheat, you, you, no matter what sort of engine management you run on it, the engine will always overheat in terms of its oil department. And I just don't like that. And this being the first prototype is really sort of interesting in a way. It does have the Bursa off engine. Despite that, the M2, that was the second variant, was built in 1942 and was fitted with a different type of engine, which also provided to be and proved to be unreliable so it, it, it was really just just a lackluster aircraft no and 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 in june 1944 since several other aircraft with about the same levels of performance were already available this thing was never really placed into production right uh, back to the game i am getting a little bit distracted here spray and pray for the win there we go goodbye corsair spitfire's coming in I have eight machine gun rounds left to finish off a Spitfire. So can we do it? He pulls up. Now, for some reason, he went vertical. If he did not go vertical, I wouldn't have been able to necessarily catch him. A little burst. Absolutely knocked the living daylights out of that Spitfire. And I guess now it's time to land. I think, what? There's P-40 chasing some aircraft. Hopefully we can get out of range of the P-40. He's closing in quite fast. You can see the oil and water, despite being on a winter map, is still quite high. Anyway, approaching final, we've cut the throttle completely and we're pulling in to land. That P-40 managed to actually take out two of our friendlies. A Spitfire is shooting up the last one. Now, there is one last guy. He's in a Wellington. He'll get absolutely done over by the rest of our team. But as you can see, it's just a very, very strange aircraft. For being a low-wing mixed construction monoplane, it's wooden for the you know, fuselage and then it's a molded birch plywood it's got two metal spar wings and three e sections with automatic le leading edge slats pretty advanced stuff for soviet technology uh, the engine radiators are built into the wing center so 
it just looks incredibly stupid. Taking off again and heading towards that Wellington, it's just interesting. I don't think that this particular aircraft is worth it for the battle pass. This could be another event aircraft somewhere down the line. I don't think it's really worth the battle pass thing. And I've played 10 games in the thing so far. I mean, I've done well. I've got kills in it. It just feels incredibly lackluster. Like, the roll rate is slow. The ailerons don't perform well. It really doesn't have an engine that is reliable enough to carry you into those fights that you really need. Even as an energy fighter. And something that, you know, strikes me as particularly important. Like, the armament preset is fantastic. Overall, the aircraft is okay, but it's still kind of a bit disappointing nonetheless. You would get better results out of an I-85 than you would out of this machine. And I'm just saying, it's kind of a bit lackluster, and it's just a bit of a classic collector's aircraft, I suppose. Anyway, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this first impressions of this ugly-ass little machine. My name is Ash, thank you very much for watching, and um, I'll catch you in another video shortly.